subscribe to our channel for latest video series on GAIN, UGC, NET and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Hello people, so today we are going to look at a concept of linear constant coefficient differential equation. So we have already seen that uh, uh, one way of describing a system was using its impulse response, right? We, we applied the input as a unit impulse signal and using the output of the system to that input we described the system, right? And then the other, fun uh, other way of representing a system is using its transfer function. There is one more way to represent a system which is using a differential equation, a differential equation which relates the input and output of a system. Now since we know that we are interested only in LTI systems, so we are going to see that how are we checking uh, linearity and time invariance of signal by using its differential equation, given differential equation, right? How can we check all the properties? So uh, one more thing that you can notice that linear, this representation using a differential equation is the closest approximation, closest possible way to represent a system, okay? More accurate, right? Now uh, what are we doing is, see we come across electrical circuits very frequently, you know, right? Uh, we, you, we, we are studying inductor, capacitor, resistance, etc. And also you know that the inductor and capacitor are 90 degree out of phase from current and voltages, okay? So we represent them in frequency domain. So when you are forming a equation for the circuit, one single equation for the circuit, you are going to have differential equations since they are lagging or leading 90 degree in phase. There we are using differential equations to represent a system, to represent relations of the input and output. If you are considering voltage as the input and current as the output, then there we are using differential equations, okay? So we are going to look at general representation of the differential equation and how we checking different properties of a system using the differential equation. So if you are having any equation of this form, Okay, if, if there is a general equation of this form, okay, general uh, differential equation of this form where these a k and b k are constants, okay. So one thing that you can see here is, see there are no constant terms on either side, okay, only terms containing y and x which is important for the equation to be linear. Lin in linearity we saw that for homogeneity to be satisfied, for superposition to be satisfied, we need that no constants must be added, okay. If, if there would have been some constant terms other than differential terms, then this would not follow superposition, okay. So we are having only terms with y and x, a k and b k are constants, they are not time dependent variables, they are constant. If these a k or b k are time dependent variables, this equation is not going to be time invariant, okay. We do do not want any terms containing t. So these a k and b k are some constant terms. This n is known as the order of differential equation. Why? Because n is the highest power and this, this is going to be the highest power here on this side LHS. This is going to be the order of the differential equation. Now see any equation of this form where, okay, I am writing down all the conditions for this con uh, equation for given equation to be LCCDE. LCCDE is linear constant coefficient differential equation or for this equation to represent a LTI system, what are the conditions? Product terms, product terms mean product terms like, like x square t, y square t, dy by dt whole square etc. These should not be there, okay. These type of terms should not be present. See, if these type of terms are present in the equation, this equation is not going to be linear. Linear equation can only contain terms with power 1, power unity, okay. That Then only the equation can be linear, should not be there, should not be there. Then one more thing that we saw for linearity is no constant terms should be there, no constant terms 
since if there are any constant terms on either side of the equation it is not going to follow superposition it is not going to be a linear equation right so these are the two conditions which should be satisfied for this equation to be linear now for time invariance what do we need we need that these coefficients these coefficients a k and b k should not contain any t term they should be independent of variable t right constant a k and b k should be should be independent of t or should be time independent right they should not contain any terms of t then if these conditions are satisfied we can say that this is going to be lcc de linear constant coefficient differential equation and it is going to represent a lti system fine Right, so these are the conditions for a system to be LTI and to represent LTI system we are having a LCC D linear constant coefficient differential equation. Now we talk about solutions of this equation because to find out the response we need solution of the equation. So in general, in general we say that solution of the equation is going to have two parts ok. Solution of the equation yt is going to have a particular solution and one homogeneous solution this is particular solution ypt and homogeneous solution homogeneous solution is found out by solving this see this is known as a homogeneous equation if i just consider this much part okay solution of this equation is going to give me homogeneous solution homogeneous solution yh Right? On solving this equation, I can obtain homogeneous solution of this differential equation. Right? And this is particular solution. Particular solution corresponds to the input that you are applying. See, homogeneous solution for equation is going to be the same. Uh, whatever input you are applying, this homogeneous solution is not going to change. Right? This does not depend on the input. This particular solution is going to be unique for each different input that you apply. Right? This depends on the input. This particular solution is going to depend on the input. Homogeneous solution depends on the system ok depends on only the this LHS of this equation. So in general any solution of a LTI system is going to contain two parts particular solution and homogeneous solution right. Now if the system is linear if the system is linear then we are going to obtain two outputs ok one is zero state output and one is zero input response ok let us see that also. So what are we saying is if this system if this this equation is representing a linear system then what is going to happen is response of the system is given by C. What are we saying is the homogeneous response that we uh, talked about the response yh we looked at is going to be obtained by solving this LHS of this uh, equating this LHS to 0. It is actually solved uh, obtained by solving n auxiliary conditions ok n equations which are formed by this side of the equation. By if the auxiliary conditions are 0 then we say that the system is linear. But in case the auxiliary conditions are not 0 we say that output of the the system response of the system is going to be sum of 0 input and 0 state responses. This is 0 input response and this is 0 state response. What is 0 input response? See this this is this response is because of the auxiliary conditions because of auxiliary conditions of the system this does not depend on the input of the system because of auxiliary conditions auxiliary conditions or you can say memory of the system because of the previous state of the system this is due to previous state of the system does not depend on input right if even if you are not applying input you are going to obtain the zero input response does not depend on input whereas the zero state response is independent of auxiliary conditions independent of auxiliary conditions this is going to be obtained due to the input only due to due to applied input right this is going to be because of the applied input. So if I just try to sketch this in one uh, one uh, diagram what can I say is suppose this is a linear system if this is a linear system auxiliary conditions are going to be 0. If I am applying my input input to this system 
I am going to obtain zero state response right and due to the state of the system or auxiliary conditions of the system I am going to obtain zero input response both of them combinedly are going to make up my response complete response of the system so upon applying input to the linear system I am going to obtain the zero state response which is due to only due to the input not because of the state of the system this zero input uh, response is due to state of the system auxiliary conditions of the system and both of them combinedly are going to make up the complete response of the system now see do not confuse zero input uh, response and zero state response with particular response and homogeneous response see in general okay just just make a note note in general zero input response is not equal to homogeneous response and and zero state response is not equal to particular right this 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 is not true okay but what happens this zero input response uh, but zero input response contains contains homogeneous response and zero state response contains contains both both homogeneous as well as particular responses this is going to contain both of them okay so you can just note here do not confuse zero input response to be homogeneous solution and zero state response to be particular solution of a system in general they are going to contain zero input is going to contain homogeneous and zero state is going to contain both of them homogeneous as well as particular solution okay if a system is linear you are going to have this one as zero this is going to be zero you are going to have only this one right so uh, this is how we are uh, obtaining solutions of a system so uh, if someone asks you if a system does not have memory if a system is memory less then this this response is going to become zero okay because no previous state no auxiliary conditions are going to be there system does not have memory so no auxiliary condition no previous state so only zero state response we're going to obtain so uh, different questions can be formed based on these concepts so just remember them this is how we checking linearity of a system using differential equation of the system right now if you look at causality of the system what happens causality of the system means this is not going to obtain you're not going to obtain any output from the system for any time instances before zero okay for any negative time instances right so what is going to happen is the system is going to be initially at rest initial rest condition so i am uh, taking a question and we would see all the concepts uh, with the help of the same question only that would be better right so in this question we are given a differential equation defining a system and uh, this this equation relates the input and the output so they have given you an uh, auxiliary condition auxiliary condition means previous condition previous state of the system which is at t is equal to 0 the input y0 is equal to y0 and they have given you the output which starts from this see this input contains ut which means this input is applied after t is equal to 0 so they are uh, asking you to find yt which is the response of the system and then they are asking you to express it in terms of zero input response and zero state response right so we start with uh, this equation so as we've seen that output yt response yt consists of two parts which is particular solution particular response and homogeneous response this particular response depends on the input and uh, is, is, is of the form of the input only and this homogeneous input uh, response is going to be independent of the input depends only on the uh, this via uh, lhs of this equation so uh, what am i saying is let let yt i am just assuming this particular solution to be a into e power minus b t y because the this particular solution depends on the input only right so this is going to be of some form some type of input only and this is going to exist only for t greater than 0 now if i just put this y p t in the equation what is going to happen d y p t upon d t plus a into y p t is going to be equal to k into e power minus bt now if you just put y pt here what is going to happen right 
right so i can just cancel e to the power minus bt from the complete equation and this equation is going to become so from here i can find that a is equal to k upon a minus b a is equal to k upon a minus b and particular solution of this equation is particular response of this equation is going to be k upon a minus b into e power minus bt and which exists for t greater than 0 right this is going to be the particular response of the system now if you if you talk about homogeneous response homogeneous response so i am saying that let homogeneous response be b e to the power st okay i have assumed this from my side this is my assumption why because my input was something of this form okay so i assumed homogeneous uh, solution to this so homogeneous response to be b into e to the power st now this this homogeneous response must satisfy must satisfy this this equation this must be satisfied right now if you just put it here this is going to be right this is what this equation is going to be equal to yeah right since the input is 0 ok so we are putting this as e0 so this is going to become now for this equation to be 0, for the given equation to be 0, where b is not 0 we know, therefore s is equal to minus a, s is going to be equal to minus a or I can say that homogeneous equation, homogeneous uh, response of the system is going to be equal to b e to the power minus a t. Now, now what can you say? response of this system response of the system which was going to be equal to particular response plus homogeneous response this is going to be k upon a minus b into e power minus bt plus b e power minus at now you have given the auxiliary condition that at t is equal to 0 this is going to be equal to y naught this is y t right so uh, at t is equal to 0 this should be equal to y naught so I am putting t is equal to 0 here. Now this should be equal to y naught, y naught. Here from here what I am going to obtain is b is equal to y naught minus k upon a minus b. Right? This is this is what we have obtained, which means that okay, I am writing here which means that response of the system is going to become yt is going to be equal to uh, okay yeah k upon a minus b into e to the power minus bt plus in place of b, b I am putting this y naught minus k upon a minus b into e to the power minus at right now see for t less than 0 for t less than 0 what is going to happen for t less than 0 this particular response is going to vanish ok this is not going to exist for t is equal to 0 y t is going to be equal to we are only going to have this homogeneous solution right and for t greater than 0 we are going to have both the solution when this input is going to be applied we are going to have both the solutions ok so now see for t less than 0 we are not going to have this input right this is x t is going to be 0 and this equation is going to become of this form this this equation is going to turn to this form dy h t right and solution for this equation was b to the power e s t therefore for t less than 0 y t is going to be equal to b to the power b into e to the power e s t now since you know from auxiliary condition we are given the auxiliary condition that y is 0 y0 is equal to y0 if you put t is equal to 0 here this is going to become b which means that yt is equal to y0 e to the power st for t less than 0 and for t greater than 0 you are going to have the rest of the solution for t greater than 0 you are going to have yt equal to if you just combine both of them you are going to have 
k upon e minus b into e to the power minus b t minus e to the power minus a t. So, this is going to be your response for t greater than 0 and this is going to be the response for t less than 0, right? Fine. So, uh, see this is the response that you have obtained for you this response we obtained without the input this this one this is we obtained for without uh, without the input so this is going to be your zero input response zero input response this has been obtained without the input when input was not applied and this response this response is not due to the state okay i am multiplying this with ut since this occurs only for t greater than 0 i can just multiply with ut now this response occurs only because of the input after the input has been applied so this is my zero state response zero state response now see uh, we noted that zero input response generally consists of homogeneous response only homogeneous part only whereas zero state response is going to consist of both consist of both zero input uh, homogeneous as well as particular response now you can see here this is a part of particular response and this is a part of homogeneous response this zero state response is consisting of both whereas zero input generally consists of homogeneous response only right uh, so this is how i am expressing yt in terms of zero input and zero state responses right yt is a combination of these two where this is zero input response and this is a zero state response okay now see if I want this system to be linear right if I, I am wishing that the system is linear this uh, given uh, equation is LCCD then what do I need see we have studied that for a system to be linear a non zero input should give zero output right if the input is zero output should be zero only and uh, zero input should not give a non zero output now see if xt is 0 that is if k if I make this k as 0 xt becomes 0 then my output should also be 0 my system should not respond to a 0 input but if you just look at the response this is my response right here if k becomes 0 this part is going to become 0 but this part is still going to remain okay this is still going to remain for this part to be 0 what we need is we need that b should be b or y not y not must be 0 that is only when auxiliary conditions of an equation are 0 there are no auxiliary condition no memory in the system no previously stored values in the system only then my system is going to be linear for a system to uh, not to respond to a zero input for a zero input to not create a non-zero output auxiliary conditions of the system should be zero similarly if i want the system to be time invariant then also this y zero should be zero y not must be zero only then my system is going to be causal time invariant linear everything right so the system should not have auxiliary condition and else we studied that if the system ha is not linear it, it has some auxiliary condition then we can express its output as sum of zero input and zero state response see uh, this zero input response is occurs in a non-linear devices like capacitance inductors okay they have some charge stored some some uh, voltage stored that is why we are having this concept of zero input response right Okay, so uh, they've given us uh, interconnection of some. Uh, this is an integrator. This is these are integrators. This is a summer, and these are scalar multipliers. Okay, so they've given a connection of these elements, and they're asking you to represent the system using a differential equation. Okay, so how are we doing this? Is see wherever we are having some different different signals. Suppose at this point, I'm considering that the signal is W T. This point. And at this point after addition after the, this summer the signal is ET. Now see this kind of approach is going to help you okay if you just try to deal with XT and YT directly you are going to get very confused better deal like this. Now since this is an integrator I can write that WT, WT is differentiation of YT right. Since on integrating WT, I am obtaining YT, so I can write WT is differentiation of YT. Similarly, ET, ET is going to be differentiation of WT, 
Why? Because in integrating ET you are obtaining WT. Now if you just look at this adder, this summer, what can I say? What all is coming here? WT is being subtracted after multiplying with the scalar multiplier A1. Right? So what can I say? XT minus A1 WT and this is, this is A2YT minus A2YT is equal to this is our on adding and subtracting all these we are obtaining ET, ET. Now see we needed an equation in XT and YT only WT and ET are intermediate variables, intermediate signals that we introduced for our convenience. So I can just replace this ET and WT with DYT right. I can write WT as WT can be written as DYT by DT minus a2 yt is going to be equal to et. Now et is differentiation of wt where wt is differentiation of yt so I can write this as d2y by dt square. Now if I just rearrange this equation this becomes d2yt by dt square plus a1 dyt by dt plus a2 yt is equal to xt. So this is my required differential equation. Now see one thing that you can note here is order of this differential equation is 2. Order means the highest degree of dy by dt which is 2. Right? This is the highest degree. Now this order of the integrate uh, order of this differential equation depends on the number of integrators. If I had I if I would have had yeah uh, three integrators here, then the order of my corresponding differential equation would have been three. Order of the differential equation is always equal to number of integrators in the system. Right? I had two integrators, so order of my differential equation is going to be two. So uh, this is how you are going to represent any system using differential equations in continuous time and difference equations in discrete time, right, thank you.